Good morning, everyone. It's, uh, what day is it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's, um, it's Tuesday, uh, April 17th. My, my clock is really off today. I don't know what year my clock thinks it is, but my clock thinks it's Saturday. It's Tuesday, April 17th, and, um, 2012, and, uh, the time right now is 7.56 a.m. I guess, you know, with the time you have to confirm that and verify that with all your clocks because uh, everyone's got a different time on it. And the one that's really supposed to be dependable, my little atomic clock, that one's, uh, that one's an hour off now. So, and I have no idea how many years off, but it's off. So, anyway, um... The, the the weather outside it's nice and uh, bright, a little sunny. The clouds are a little uh, scattered, but uh, the, there's some clear spots in the sky. I have no idea what happened to the moon. I have no idea. It, it was there for a couple days. It was it was half moon, then slightly smaller than half moon the next day. It was out there in the morning. And then I had a couple cloudy days, and then I went out the next day, and I don't know if the I had, I don't know what happened to the moon. So, and then I also noticed this morning the position of the sun is, uh, you know, if you look at the position of the sun in terms of the uh, the uh, the rotation, well, the the sunrise and stuff, it just kind of seemed like oh, okay, well the the sun is a little more to the north now than than uh, I, I thought it was. I thought it was like directly ahead of me when I looked down, down the street toward the uh, toward the west, but from the point that I was looking at it seemed as though it was more north in the sky. So there's that. My insect count, I think I'm going to put an insect picture on the uh, website today. It's one of those long-legged, uh, what the heck do we used to call them? I, I don't know what it's called. Maybe I can look it up here and, and figure this out. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the, the insect count this morning is one. I, I saw one insect on my door. I, I didn't see any insects out there. I saw one. It's, it was one of those flying mosquito kind of things. And I didn't look real hard, but I didn't notice any insects out there in my yard. I just noticed one. I, I think he, uh, he, he is seeking uh, safety and asylum on my house because everyone's running around with their insecticides and pesticides and, and uh, you know. So um, a anyway, there's, there's that. He's like one of those long-legged mosquito things, but they aren't really... They they look kind of like a mosquito, but they they aren't, and they don't bite. They're just kind of a nuisance because they uh, they fly around and get into your face and stuff. But uh, there, there there was only one that I saw. What the heck is this guy's name? Um, what else can I talk about this morning? The uh, royal peony, the the blossoms are getting uh, a little bit uh, bigger. And uh, I wonder if I should stop this and locate the bug and come right back. I, I think I'm going to stop this and find the bug and I'll be right back. You, you won't notice a thing. I'll be back in like half a second when the uh, tapes play. Okay, I'm back. It's now, uh, what time is it now? It's 8.01 a.m. Um, it looks like what this thing is called, and I'm not sure because I'm not, uh, I'm not officially qualified to identify insects. But if it's not, it resembles what is referred to as a stilt bug. And uh, it's a flying insect. It has uh, six legs. And, uh, and uh, I don't know, what does it say about this thing? The, uh, the, the student humor of the morning is, uh, <laughs> I was out there taking, uh, uh, Stay, taking, um, fo well, shooting photographs of some of the, the flowers in the yard, and uh, one of the uh, one of the flowers I noticed was that the peony is opening up, the royal peony, and there are buds all over the uh, the uh, regular peony of which has white flowers. But um, so I um, 
I, I don't have to look, look this up again, but um, the um, I can't talk and chew gum at the same time. My my little student humor for this morning, with uh, with having been thinking about photography, is have you isolated your subjects? In photography, you must sometimes isolate your subjects. So my student humor is, have you isolated your subjects? And then I started thinking about, well, other things, you know. I mean, high school students will have a chuckle about muses, and uh, my daughter is, uh, she's going to college and taking classes and working on gain, getting a degree in nursing, so I thought she might like to hear that one. Have you isolated your subjects? Anyway, let me look this up. I'll be back in two seconds. You won't notice a thing. Okay, it says, uh, this. Uh, what time is it now? Uh, it's now 8.06 a.m. And... Uh, so uh, it looks like the, the stilt bug is in the family Baratidae, and uh, I'm using the National Audubon Society Field Guide to Insects and Spiders of North America, and um, it says these slender insects have distinctive long thread-like antenna and slender stilt-like legs, each one-third to two-third as long as the body, and... Uh, it goes on, but uh, anyway, it uh, it says that this is a stilt bug. Well, it looks like it. You know, I, I'm like I said, I'm not officially, uh, I'm not an official bug identification person qualified to do that. But I like insects and spiders. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. What else can I say today? Um, the uh, I mentioned the moon and the position of the sun. Uh, there's some really bright stars out there. The sky has been clear at night, and uh, I mean at night, not right now, but uh, I noticed last night uh, the sky was clear and a lot of very super bright stars in the sky. One of the things I was wondering, and I don't know if I've mentioned this previously, talking about stars, is uh, the view of the constellations, and do you see a different sky from the southern hemisphere of the Earth? than you do from the northern hemisphere of the Earth. I mean, it's the Earth is a pretty small place, and uh, I, I was just wondering. I mean, the stars are way out there. One of the things um, I know, I, well, even though the sky is really clear here and in, uh, in the Cleveland, Ohio area, I'm in Lakewood, Ohio, the United States, um, even though um, even though the sky is very clear here, um, the, um, uh, the, you can't see the Milky Way here from Cleveland, Ohio. I've driven out west and been through uh, the uh, southern part of the United States out west toward, you know, through the, uh, I don't know, Oklahoma uh, area along there and traveling west across the country from uh, the Cleveland area out toward Los Angeles. And uh, I've I've never seen the uh, the Milky Way. You know, I think maybe maybe once when I was a kid, I saw the Milky Way uh, f when I was in Alliance, Ohio, which is about an hour or two south of Cleveland. I'm not sure, but I I think I might recall that. But I don't recall ever seeing the Milky Way from here in Cleveland. And you know, it's kind of interesting that something. Some you know your view you you think of the uh, the stars and everything being so far out there. Um, it just seems kind of odd that you can't see the same sky no matter where you are. When I was out in Oklahoma driving across the country, I saw the Milky Way and it's absolutely beautiful. It's just you know it's a great big cloud of stars, and um, that just goes across the sky. And um, uh, the um, and that, you know, I, that was a long time ago. I haven't been out west along that path for, um, well, that was when I was 18, so that was 30 years ago. But, um, you know, the, the sky, I was wondering if the skies look different from the southern hemisphere. If you're following the, uh, the stars in the, in the sky to lead you across the, uh, the, uh, the earth, <laughs> you know, and, uh, I, I don't know. I I was thinking about at one point the uh, the early explorers of uh, of 
uh, the Americas, I guess, the European explorers that came across the, the ocean and found the Americas. And uh, I was trying to remember all of the explorers that I had found, um, well, not found, but learned about when I was, when I was a kid. And um, uh, so um, I started thinking about how they followed the stars. Uh, and they followed the sun and things like that. They they used astronomy to guide them. And I was just wondering, you know, what do they do on a cloudy day? And uh, started wondering about, you know, the different views of the stars. And, and, and then I started thinking, you know, if they don't know, you know, if you can't see the same star, what were they following? Because the view's different. And... Uh, so what what was t I came up with something sort of interesting about that started thinking about compasses and and I hung some magnets in my house some bar magnets to uh, demonstrate to the kids the uh, the north and south poles and how the magnets you can hang a magnet from a thread and uh, so I've I've got some magnets hanging around in my house, and it, you know what else it'll do? It'll it'll detect any magnetic uh, fields or or any it'll uh, any magnetic waves floating through my house also. So that's uh, but um, but I was I wanted to show my kids the uh, the magnets pointing from north to south, and and they do if you hang a magnet. I've got little bar magnets. They were a kid's toy. And uh, I hung them with strings to show the kids, the grandkids. Um, but with compasses, um, I, I guess, um, you know, and, and uh, started thinking about how can you make, you know, survival skills and making magnets and, uh, you know, magnetizing a piece of metal. My kids, I don't think, I, I wasn't there because I got divorced. So I was trying to think of, you know, the things I wasn't there to uh, teach them. And uh, you know how to make a magnet and uh, floating it on a puddle and things like that. To uh, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, find a puddle and float it on a puddle of water. And uh, so, um, just you know, we liked camping and uh, going camping in the woods. And uh, I've never been camping in the desert and other types of areas, fields and stuff. But I've been camping in the woods and. Uh, had fun playing in the creeks and the streams and swimming in the ponds and the lakes. But um, the um, the thing that um, here's another one for you. Uh, okay, what's the history of Europe and when was the compass discovered? And geez, I, I don't have the dates in front of me, but I started finding you know that the the discovery of the compass was in Europe and then I, I you know I'm looking up in dictionaries and science books and things and when was the compass discovered well you know then there's there's uh, I think I don't know if it was China had uh, invented the uh, not not I guess discovered is not the qu the correct word but invented the compass um, and China had invented the compass prior to that but there's a I think Gilbert in uh, England, maybe, or Scotland, um, somewhere in Europe, uh, Mr. Gilbert gets credit for the compass, and uh, and it seemed like I found something uh, that was a discrepancy that would indicate that the compass was actually, um, and again, I said discovered, and I meant invented, um, but I, I think uh, Gilbert was, uh, well, I, I think the compass the compass, according to something else I found, was actually invented in China quite a bit prior to uh, Gilbert inventing it and getting credit for it in all of the books that I have. And then there's, you know, there's the uh, the history of the United States and the history of the re the re revolution, is it the American Revolution? And uh, you know that that makes me think about that. And whose version? Whose version did you get? Did you get the uh, the British version of the American Revolution or the the United States version of the American Revolution? Whose version of the uh, the discovery? You know. And and again, here we go again. Here's my geography coming in. There's 197 197 countries and uh, territories. So whose version of what did you get? You know, I, I was asking my uh, my daughter, the nursing student, and uh, she's 30 years old and she's got a couple kids. She's married, and I was asking her if uh, if she's familiar. She was interested in uh, uh, psychiatric pediatric nursing, um, 
originally, and I don't know specifically what her interest is now, but um, I was asking her, and especially with the globalization, uh, where, whether or not um, she's familiar with the uh, psychology you know, of the 197, you know, is, is the psychology different in each country around the world? Who are the scientists? So anyway, where am I? I've gone off on a zillion tangents again, and I guess when you start thinking about things, you know, in terms of 197 countries, maybe, you know, I, I guess I keep illustrating 197 countries, but, uh, and, but with that, you know, I don't specifically have a focus, but, um, <laughs> other than to illustrate everything in terms of a global view. Um, but the, the compass, and uh, I, I don't know, did I, did I lose my thought there? Uh, astronomy, the views of the stars, how, how the heck were the, uh, the discoverers, the explorers from Europe coming across the Atlantic Ocean? What were they following on a cloudy day or a cloudy night or a stormy day or a stormy night? And I guess, you know, um, you know, in terms of telling time, how do you uh, tell time on a ship uh, with, uh, what, what the heck is it called, uh, a sun clock or a sundial? You know, what, what were they using to tell time to orient themselves? And, you know, what did they have, well... Anyway, it's something to think about the early explorers and what they uh, what they were actually using to guide themselves. Because um, I, I guess uh, you know, having traveled across the United States and not knowing uh, uh, specifically what the view of the stars might be in different places, I was just curious. You know, I, I guess there's uh, there's pollution issues with regard to stars and what you can and cannot see that is caused by industry and variations in the atmosphere and thing, things like that. Um, but um, I, I didn't know if location was part of that also. So there's a song called The Southern Cross and um, I loved that song. I, I don't even, I'm sorry to say I don't know off the top of my head who did that. It was like a, a I don't know, popular song back in the, uh, I don't know, I, I guess I was listening to it in the 80s. I don't know when it came out, but um, the Southern Cross is actually a uh, constellation. And uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this previously, but there's a, uh, a constellation up in the sky that I'm particularly interested in, and one of the stars is Betelgeuse, which is a movie. So it's kind of like, you know, these, these, little, these little things are out there, um, uh, and it's kind of, <laughs> I don't know if it's scary or fun discovering something like, oh, the Southern Cross, that's, that's a constellation, that's kind of nice. But Betelgeuse, that one was a little, you know, that one was a little, uh, um, I don't know, I, I didn't expect that one. I was kind of, uh, bewildered or something with, with that one. And it, like, is there some sort of, ha, ha, does everyone know this? Does everyone know that Betelgeuse was the name of a star of a constellation up in the sky, out in space in the universe? And, uh, so anyway, um, I, that's it for now. I, I, uh, this, you know, I think I've got about 15 minutes of babble and I don't think I'm giving you a whole lot of information. I'm sorry to say just some, uh, more of my perplexities. But anyway, have a great day, everyone. You know, I, I, uh, I, I'm trying to get these posted online, but my computer is not always cooperative with me, and I don't know if anyone's listening to these or enjoys them or, or what, but um, I, I do enjoy making them, and so I, I kind of hope that, you know, if my kids, my kids don't want to talk to me on the phone. They're so busy with their lives, so they can, uh, they can play a, uh, play a recording of me when they when they feel like listening to me they've got an on off switch for mom and and uh you know i guess what if and when anyone wants to uh listen to me they can turn me on and off i uh i guess i don't need to uh <laughs> need to have any uh real social interaction with anyone it's just all a matter of uh, okay, everyone's busy and everyone's got their lives. Uh, does anyone want to listen to Inta? Uh, okay, hit the on switch. Okay, wh is that enough Inta for right now? Uh, okay, hit the off switch. Okay, so that's that's it for Inta right now. Um, it's uh, it's now 8.20 in the morning, and uh, it's uh, 
Tuesday, April 17th, 2002. I'm in Lakewood, Ohio of the United States, and my name is Inta Mitterbach. Have a great day. Thank you. Uh, just one last thing. I'm back again. It's um, it's actually it's now 8:45 a.m. Uh, but uh, realizing that I got an an associate degree in science, of which I had a concentration in astronomy and physics for my science classes, and uh, uh, then I'm supposed to know all this stuff, of which I, I don't think I've demonstrated my uh, knowledge of uh, science very well. But um, the uh, I'm looking at, I've got a book called National Audubon Society, Field Guide to the Night Sky, and uh, it's a great book to have, and uh, it's got information about the constellations, great uh, color plates and stuff, but there is a picture here of Orion, which was the uh, constellation that I was, I, I noticed in the sky, and um, that, that was the one that had the Betelgeuse star, uh, the one star that I noticed, and... Uh, so, uh, anyway, it was Orion. I just wanted to confirm that. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, have a great day. Goodbye.